typical colors 2 has received an update, updated localization files. Anarchy really shut down all the servers just for updated lo- Typical Colors 2 has received the Total Easy Anarchy to update. update. Oh my god! The Total Anarchy Update. An update that one may consider a gift from the gods above or the curse from the satans below. <laughs> this update has been a pleasant surprise for everyone and I appreciate all the changes that have been made on this patch, including new maps, balance changes, and new cosmetics. This update packed a lot of stuff, so I highly recommend checking out their update logs in their Discord server, in-game, or the wiki, or the pastepin I made, because wiki is slow as fuck. So instead of the usual content additions we get to the game, we instead got some quality of life and other neat things like two more summer exclusive crates, including what I would consider one of the best cosmetics ever added to the game. Huge props to Crystal for making the models for them, there's a lot of them and I can assure you getting any of them will be worth the 120 funds price tag. We also got a personal statistic tab in the achievement section, and I would say it's a nice thing to have for keeping track of things such as how long you've played a certain class, or how many times you've won a certain map. I tend to be interested in analytics and statistics a lot, so this new addition is definitely something I like. And speaking of achievements, we got a hundred new achievements in a single update. Yeah I know, pretty ridiculous. I looked at over some of the achievements and a lot of them are quite specific and might require you to play in a specific playstyle, or some you can easily get just by playing the game normally. Also on the bottom of the achievements UI, they move the loading tips there, so if you want to cycle through some of them, then yeah, they're there. The addition of display names were also added, so now you can use your display name to get those sick frags. This is again one of the more quality of life features added, and I can see a lot of people liking this feature. And a feature that is a long time coming, loadouts. They function exactly the same how it would in TF2, so if you want to switch up loadouts quickly, then you'll definitely find this feature super handy. Also by the way, when you go to your inventory loadout, a preview of your character will load onto the right side of the screen, and you can click the character to say their funny lines. I'm waiting you piece of filth! Give it up now! Drop it! Yeah, you looking at me, I'm looking at you! You're gonna die! Take out that MJ! They also added something that old time players would definitely love, the ability to sell duplicate hats. If you have more than 5 of the same hat, you can sell that hat to get funds back. So if you're like this guy with several duplicates of the same hat, you'll definitely like this feature a lot. Getting duplicates isn't as frustrating as before. No new maps have been added to the rotation, but there are some added to the VIP panel. Atlantis is the only attack defense map added on this update, and I've got some thoughts on it. First of all, the map is really small, like gorge but half small. You spawn on red, look outside the window, and the green spawn is right there in front of you. I'm guessing a small attack defense map was intended, as Yellow Valley is on the relatively big side, with Gorge being a medium size and this is meant to be the small map. I like the theme it has with the blend of concrete and granite, but the color scheme of the map isn't my taste. It looks cold and desaturated, and it could also be difficult to tell which side of the map you're at for an inexperienced player, as there's no color for green or red indicating if you're nearby your teammates or directly in the enemy lines. It's probably because the map is in its early stages and only the bare bones have been planned, but the biggest problem I see with this map is that the points are very close. Like seriously, if you're a mobile class then you can just jump right up to the second point after capping first. Estrock is the second map that's likely to be planned for public rotation, and I gotta say, this map is pretty well done. Unlike Atlantis, this map is really big and I would say the size is between around Upward and Badwater. This map has a very good balance of flank routes and choke points to be able to make a good map, and I can see this becoming a very popular map among the community. But I have one issue with this map, and it's right here. This flank choke path thing directly leads the green team straight into red spawn. This can promote some really insane spawn camps, especially if they have a teleporter built up somewhere in the flank route. Now, there are some routes that the red team could take to attack that spot from somewhere else, but if they're getting actively spawn camped, I don't see a good way to actually counter a spawn camp happening from there. But who knows, so far the rounds I've had with the SRAC is pretty great, and I can't wait for this to get onto public rotation. Other than Atlas and SRAC, only other maps that were added were either a joke map or test maps that people could experiment game features with. We had a lot of significant balance changes on this update, including some... questionable buffs. 
A lot of things got changed, so I'll go over the significant ones first. First, we got a major rebalance in the Amahog being renamed to more of a kick-ass name named the Deathblow. On paper, it seems like the same old unviable weapon, but this one stat makes it a very useful tool to use. 50% faster holster and deploy speed. This stat allows you to use it as a finisher or a combo weapon. I found this weapon pairing very well with the degreaser as you can quickly switch to it and deal burst damage and switching back to your primary to deal over fire damage. But using it as a finisher is still more reliable as the clip on reload kill rewards you for killing enemies with it. However, I won't expect a lot of people to be using this as the smaller clip side is an incredible detriment and very punishing. Maybe removing the accuracy stat and making it deal more damage or giving it more bullets per shot would give some incentive to use it, but at the current state of the newly revamped and renamed Deathblow, I don't expect many people to use this weapon. Then there is the removal of the SM2. Not as controversial as the other change, but still just as impactful. Now, as a lad who started the entire SM2 abuse, I can safely say that it fucking deserved it. SM2 promoted an even brainless strategy on Arsonist, spamming M2 until they died or they reflected a projectile which probably wasn't even intentional on their part. The SM2's removal was mostly appreciated by the majority of the community, and if you dislike this change, then you're probably that one asshole switching to SM2 whenever Rooftop came into rotation. Moving on to our second contender of the biggest nerfs on TC2 history, Shields. On this update, all shields except for the Rage and Ball is now unable to crit or mini crit. You might think that this got the Market Gardener treatment. That's where you'd be pretty wrong. Anita is still stupid fun and stupid good. I believe that the shield's intentions were to close the gap between you and your opponent, and now that is actually possible without it being completely unfun and unfair against the opponent. But let's be goddamn real here, one shotting 8 of the 9 classes by equipping the battle axe with the shield that was able to crit wasn't exactly fair. So if you're like this guy and thinks that Anita is now hot garbage, then that ass you probably have a skill issue. 